Well, hello, this is Mike from Music City. Welcome to my latest installment of what I call Ranking Records. Today, I am gonna go through an artist, and that artist is Mr. Dave Edmonds. Long time, one of my long time favorites. Uh, I, I just love the music of Dave Edmonds. Um, you know, uh, if you wanna talk about Edmonds, I mean, uh, just a, a great, great, great guitar player. Uh, a fantastic producer. His credits as a producer are long and 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 fabulous. I mean, the things that he's done. Uh, you know, he had an earlier career, uh, and I, you know, prior to meeting up with Nick Lowe and eventually leading into Rockpile. But you know, if we fa let's face it, I mean, that's where I learned uh, about Dave, and that's where most of us, uh, you know, got to know the music of Dave Benjamins is with his great. Wit work with Nick Lowe and Rockpile. He had a career after that. Um, and um, uh, sadly, uh, you know, Dave has retired from music a few years now. And, uh, you know, we just don't hear any new music or we don't get to see him live. And, um, you know, it, if we talk about uh, Edmund's music in general, you know, he's not uh, much of a songwriter. All, you know, it's not, not his thing, but he has written a few songs that are, that are good, you know. Uh, but, one of the things about Edmonds, he uh, knows how to find great songs to do. He's got a love of old rockabilly and old rock and roll. Um, and he's got a lot of friends who have given him some really great songs over the year. And, it, and what's remarkable for me is that these people who have given him songs are my favorites. I mean, you got Bruce Springsteen, Elvis Costello, again, Nick Lowe, John Hyatt, Graham Parker. Uh, uh, Al Anderson from NRBQ, uh, just people that I know, I know and love. Not, I don't know <laughs> people that I love. I wish I knew them all. Uh, and so that's he's a great interpreter, and he and he's had some hits along the way, which is really kind of fascinating. So I think what I want to do here is just do a quick walk through the records in uh, chronological order to let you see them. Then I'm going to pause the video and come back and do a ra a ranking. But uh, First off, you know, Ed Edmonds had a lot of uh, bands in his uh, younger days. Uh, we're not going to go over them. Uh, where we're going to start is with with uh, the band called Love Sculpture. And now, isn't this a cool record? You know how they, the record is cut out. Uh, and this was the uh, first record of two by the band Love Sculpture, which I'm looking at the line notes, was, was basically a trio of Dave, uh, Bob Jones, and John Williams. Uh, this came out, I'm looking at my notes here, uh, this came out in uh, 19... Where is it? It slid down on me. Uh, 1968, Blues Helping. And then they followed it up two years later in 1970 with uh, this one, Conforms and Feelings. I, I, I prefer the second record. This one, you know, kind of bluesy, pub rocky. Uh, here, a little bit more uh, rock and roll. And then now, there are, is something on this record... Uh, that's very familiar to you, and that's Edmund's interpretation of the classical peach and piece, and let me get this name right, by Cachatorian, is that correct? Uh, called Saber Dance, uh, just an instrumental where Edmund just goes crazy on guitar, and uh, if you uh, if you hear it, you're gonna you're gonna recognize it. It's it's kind of one of these things that's made a lot of TV soundtracks and things like that as as background music and closing music, but. Um, the real discovery for me on this record when I was playing it uh, is this song, and I'm going to open it up because I want to show you the cool uh, Parlophone label. Uh, but this song called People, People, just a gorgeous song. Go go, give it a listen. Uh, very uh, British pop, uh, you know, uh, British invasion, poppy sound. Uh, and, it, and the thing about it is I had to see who it was written by, and it was written by the duo of Fine Silver and Kerr, who I've never heard of. And when I did some digging on them, they've got two claims to fame. The other song that they wrote, they didn't write very many songs, but they also wrote a Fire for Arthur Brown. You know that song, I am the God of Hell, I give you fire. Well, he wrote, they wrote that song together. And also, uh, Fine Silver, and I'm not sure if it was with Curb, but he is the was the proprietor of Pathway Studios in London. Uh, owner and proprietor of Pathway Studios, where Nick Lowe recorded all the great Elvis Costello records, Squeeze recorded there, just this little hole in the wall studio in London. So that, that's that's kind of kind of fascinating. Now we're not going to rank Love Sculpture, so we're going to kind of put these aside, and maybe just go a little bit quicker through the through the Edmonds records here. But the first record, and oddly enough, uh, in 1972, look at the name of it, Rockpile, and that's of course where the band name 
uh, comes from. Uh, you know, back on on this record and on a lot of his records, you'll see Dave uh, played all the in most of the instruments by himself. But this was his debut record. Uh, followed up in '75 uh, uh, with "Subtle as a Flying Mallet." Uh, we went into 1997, and uh, Lowe made his first appearance on "Subtle as a Flying Mar Mallet." But uh, "Get It" really gets into what I'm gonna. Well, you're gonna see my rankings. What I call classic Edmonds. This is a lot of work with Nick Lowe, uh, and then in uh, '78 we had "Tracks on Wax 4, which for all practical purposes is a rock pile record. Followed up in '79 by "Repeat When Necessary," again a rock pile record, and "Twangin'," uh, which came out in um, '81. Uh, which again, most mostly a rock pile record. Now, in between in 1980, you had the rock pile record "Seconds of Pleasure," which we're not gonna we're not gonna cover here. Okay, so then Edmonds uh, put together a new band that I got to see live. A lot a lot of his a uh, lot of his old friends. Uh, I'm gonna go through the names here. John David played on bass. Garrett Watkins on piano. Uh, so you know you know guys that were, were from were. You know, if you followed, uh, you know, the pub rock scene and British rock scene, you, you kind of knew these guys. But the first record was D.E. Seventh, uh, and then uh, <laughs> I'm chuckling. Uh, that was in '82. Now '83, uh, something happened that a lot of Edmonds fans didn't like. Uh, he he met up with Jeff Lynn uh, for the record Information. Now Lynn only produced two tracks on Information. Uh, we'll talk more about it later. But here's the U.S. cover, and here's a really cool British cover. Um, and then, uh, a year later in 84, uh, uh, Jeff Lynne actually produced six, uh, cuts on the album called Riff Raff. And then in 1990, we had, uh, Closer to the Flame. Now this, uh, Edmund's, you know, career started to kind of slow down this point. It took him four years to put out, um, uh, what is his, really his last record of, original material recorded for a record and that's plugged in which i don't believe is that on vinyl and so that that sort of marked the end of this you know i'm a recording artist i'm going to put out a record and go on tour kind of phase and uh edmund sort of semi-retired at this point but at that point three cds uh did come out and again all worthy uh we're not going to rank these uh because for the most part they're collections of odds and sods or things that he recorded at home, uh, you know, to on you know, all by all by himself, playing all the instruments. Some of them he, he found old tracks and put them together, re-recorded some things. So not you know proper albums per se, but the first one that came out was uh, this hand-picked music fantasy fantasy musical fantasies in 1999, which you had to buy on his website, and I missed it. And I found a copy on eBay at a pretty good price. And the cool thing about it is it's autographed by Edmund, so. If you can find one, you might want to try to find one. And uh, then then uh, in 2013, wow, 14 years before he put something else out, and he put out this record called Again, which uh, British import only. I picked this up over in London. I got it down at Rough Trade, and it was really hard to find at the time. And again, uh, you know, a couple of songs he wrote on here, a couple of songs he was given, but again, mostly odds and sods. It's not a, a proper album per se. And then the final bit of recording uh, from Edmonds uh, is this on guitar, uh, Rags and Classics, which is all instrumental versions. Now, you read the liner notes, you're going to chuckle because Edmonds says, hey, uh, I, didn't, I didn't just go rob all the backing tracks uh, and lay guitar on top of them. He uh, actually recorded all of everything by himself and then went in and put guitar over it. Now, here is a question for my smart viewers. I've often wondered this, and maybe I just haven't looked in the right place, but what do you call it? Like, for example, on this record is a wider shade of pale. What do you call it when you take a backing track and you make a guitar track that follows the instrumental, um, excuse me, follows the vocal? So you're doing an instrumental take over the vocal, you know, because if you play just the backing, regular wider shade of pale without the vocals, it's not going to sound like what Edmonds is playing because he's mimicking the vocal with his lead guitar. There's got to be a name for that somewhere, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> but anyway, so that's sort of the uh, Edmonds au revoir. Is that the right word? Sounds good anyway. And uh, as I mentioned, we'll uh, put Love Sculpture and those CDs aside, and we're going to come back uh, in a minute. I'm going to shuffle these records and, and rank them in uh, the order of my favorite to my least favorite. So just hang on just a sec.
Okay, I'm back to uh, rank the records of Mr. Dave Edmonds, and uh, we've got 10 here. I put aside the plugged in uh, on CD, and we're going to just rank the 10 that I have on vinyl. I wouldn't have ranked plugged in very high anyway, but uh, let's let's go through this. And at number 10, uh, we're going to have uh, Subtle as a Flying Mallet, which is Dave's second record. I, I wasn't too wild about this record. For one reason, you know, we know, uh, we've talked about how Edmonds is an interpreter and loves old stuff. And on this record, what you have is you have a couple of, uh, you know, oh, three or four, three or four versions of, of all Phil Spector songs. And I just don't think it's uh, Edmonds' best style. And why, why did he do those songs? And they're almost sort of note for note recreations of, you know, songs like Baby I Love You and Did You Run Run. Uh, they were made for this movie uh, called Stardust with David uh, David Essex. It's a great movie. It's actually two parts. There's a prequel called That'll Be the Day in Stardust about a, a fictional rock band uh, in the movie called The Stray Cats. Ah, interesting. That Edmonds was in the movie and a member. And also there's a brief appearance of Nick Glow in this movie as well, too. But again, um, you know, uh, just, uh, I don't know, just not the best selection of songs that I think Edmonds has picked to, to cover. Um Number nine is going to be uh, Riff Raff, one of his uh, later records in the career, the one with six uh, uh, Jeff Lynne produced songs on it. Uh, you know, just, um, again, I really just a question of songs. This is really just nothing that really jumps out at me. Uh, probably the most recognizable track uh, when I went back and listened to it, I remember was he does a cover of, uh, I think it's an old Four Tops song called Something About You. But again, uh, again, just... Uh, not at the top of my Edmonds list. As is number eight, which is uh, Closer to the Flame. Uh, the, the title track's not a bad song, uh, but again, again, it, it, a lot of it just boils down to me with song selection. Just nothing, uh, you know, just uh, that absolutely jumps out at me, um, at me from this record that, uh, you know, I want to hear again and again. <laughs> uh, now, number seven, um, you know, again, uh, we talked about the curse of Jeff Lynne, how people just don't like him. Uh, I gotta admit, though, that on the information record, the two tracks that uh, Lynn produced, I to me, they're two of my favorite Edmund songs. I love the title track, Information, and another song called Slipping Away. I, I think they're great. Uh, you know, I don't personally dislike Jeff Lynn and ELO. I, I, I enjoy it. Uh, sometimes, yeah, Lynn has made an artist just uh, sound too much like him and not... I don't know, and not bring out the best of them, but I think on those two songs, tremendous. Uh, the rest of the album, though, not something, not not so much. So, uh, again, information clocks in at number uh, seven. Now, um, number six, uh, you know, here we're getting where, you know, everything from this point on, I think, is pretty darn good. Um, and number, number six, we're going to put uh, the album Rock Pile. Uh, again, uh, most of the music on here was played by uh, Edmonds, uh, most of the instruments. This is his debut record. And it, it, what's interesting about this, two things. Uh, the lead-up track is Down, Down, Down. You know, uh, I Got a Train to Catch, you know, a, a, a Girl to Fetch. You know, that was the opening song of almost every Rock Pile set that I've ever seen. So that's just kind of interesting, you know, the man Rock Pile. And it's also got on here Edmonds biggest U.S. hit ever. Do you remember his cover of I Hear You Knockin'? Yes, it was all over the AM radio, and we sort of heard of Edmonds, and then he went away for, you know, a good a good 10 years before the rock pile resurgence. So uh, that makes that, those two songs in itself make this a great record. And a couple of other good covers on here, some Chuck Berry, uh, some Dylan even. Uh, I, I, I enjoy this record quite a bit. Now we get to the top five. Number five, is going to be Twangin', as we mentioned, uh, a partial rock pile album. Got a great cover of a John Hyatt song, Something Happens, uh, Almost Saturday Night, which was pretty close to the time when Fogarty had uh, put it out well, too. And it's also got something really cool on here, um, the uh, a version of The Race Is On, uh, the old song that George Jones uh, made popular, that he records with the Stray Cats. Now remember, Dave Edmonds produced the first Stray Cats record, so that's sort of the connection there. But uh, great record, twangin'. Uh, number four, D.E. Seventh, uh, his seventh album. And I tell you what makes this, uh, Bruce Springsteen just gave him the perfect song for Dave Edmonds from Small Things, Big Days. 
uh, one day come. Show Bruce does it live in his set today. Edmonds just nailed it, owns it. Uh, Me and the Boys, a great NRBQ cut. Uh, Warmed Over Kisses, Leftover Love is a great one. I really like the song Paula Meet Jean, uh, which was written by a guy named Jude Cole, a singer-songwriter who uh, joined the band The Records for their second record. Uh, I just think, I think this is a fine, fine, fine record. Now, the next three, I'll tell you something. On any given day, I could probably change the order of these three. I think these three are Edmonds at his absolute best. I think both, all three are classic, classic records. And at number three, I'm going to go with Get It. Um, gosh, I mean, uh, this is when Nick and Dave really connected. And you got probably my favorite Edmonds song, Here Comes the Weekend. You know, uh, kind of channeling the Everly Brothers there a little bit, you know, with that song. I, I just love it. Um, you know, let's see. What else is... Oh, um, got uh, Back to School Days, the first time he picks a Graham... Uh, Parker's song to cover. He covers Nick's I Knew the Bride. Uh, Bob uh, Seeger's Get Out of a Denver. Oh, just uh, just a just a great, great record. Uh, Juju Man to the old, uh, old uh, I guess it's an old bluesy kind of song. But um, super, super record. Um, again, I, I tell you, you struggle for ranking these. Number two, uh, the brilliant, brilliant record came right out the same about the same time as Nick's Labor of Lust. So we had two rock pile records steaming up the charts and two hit singles at the steaming up the charts. Because when Nick had Cruelly Be Kind on the charts, Edmonds was there with his cover of Elvis Costello's Girls Talk, a song he just owns and just did a brilliant, brilliant version of it. Elvis is sorry he gave that one away. Uh, I got to open it up to, to get the rest of the tracks. Um, Crawling from the Wreckage, uh, Greg, Greg Graham Parker song. Uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon, which I think was written by Billy Bremner, a, a.k.a. Billy Murray. Queen of Hearts, Hank DeVita song that uh, uh, Juice Newton had hit around the same time. Um, such a, such a, such a fine, fine, fine record. But where, how do we get to number one here? The number one record, if you're following along, I think you know what it is. Um, this is, this just came out, I think, at Edmund's absolute peak. Uh, saw him play live right around the time of this record. And that is Tracks on Wax 4. What a fantastic record. Uh, Billy Bremner's Great Trouble Boys. Uh, Deborah, which I think, uh, I think El Deborah was written by Elvis, and, uh, excuse me, Elvis, uh, Nick, Nick and Dave, I believe. Uh, a song written by Will Birch of the records, A1 on the Jukebox. Um, oh gosh, uh, Never Been in Love. I think one of, one of my favorite uh, I th I'm Nick Lowe songs. But again, Rock Pile uh, at its absolute best. Uh, let's show you the label. Um, here we are back on Swan Song back then. Yeah, and uh, yep, Deborah, Deborah was uh, Edmonds and Lowe's song. Uh, Heart, it's got Heart of the City on there by Nick, written by Nick. Uh, yep, Never Been in Love is a, is, is a Nick Lowe song. But So that, that's that. So, well, we did it. I think we spent a little more time than I thought I would. But, uh, again, uh, Dave Edmonds certainly... Uh, Oh, I don't even I hate, hate to even talk about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. What a mess it is! But it's when you think about the career and influence someone like uh, Dave Edmonds has, it's just it's just a sin that he's not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But let's not go there because there's a lot of uh, blatant omissions. But hey, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I got more artists to do, more years to do. I'm still shopping for records, showing you videos there. I uh, appreciate all your support. We went over the magic thousand subscriber mark, so we'll see what that means for exposure to the channel. Uh, hit the like button, hit the share button, and 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 please hit the subscribe button. Doesn't cost you a dime. But this is Mike from Music City signing off. I hope you enjoyed this uh, latest edition of Ranking Records. <laughs>